today we are going to be talking about um, autism and what autism is for different people, uh, reliable sources to learn about autism, uh, my personal autism in a little bit of depth, um, and also um, how the media and the school sort of deal um, with autistic children and autistic adults. If you want to learn more about autism, obviously I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professional, but I am autistic myself. Um, so feel free to like and subscribe, I'm always learning. So I'm just gonna get into it. Okay, so the spectrum. Uh, the spectrum is a umbrella for autism, uh, which includes high functioning and low functioning autism and everything in between. No person with autism is the same. Uh, we all have very individual characteristics, although we're all categorized as autistic. Um, we all have different forms. We all um, deal with it and have different versions in a way. So I did say a bit about high functioning autism and low functioning autism. My personal autism is high functioning. I don't want to talk about low functioning just yet as I'm not really sure myself um, what that is as I've never dealt with it and obviously I'm not a doctor or a professional by any means. High functioning autism to my extent um, means that um, basic things that I need to get done such as um, putting clothes on the correct like feet and such making meals that sort of thing are sort of okay for me like I do struggle every now and again and need reminders but it's not completely overbearing but it's more the social side so as a high functioning autistic person I struggle heavily to depict people's emotions uh, or people's intent through their facial expressions, through anything. I find tone quite difficult to comprehend. This could mean that I am sometimes seen as selfish, sometimes seen as um, turning a blind eye because people assume I don't care and it's not that I don't care, I just don't notice because it, it's not obvious to me that that person oh that person looks upset right and because i don't notice i don't it, it doesn't occur to me that that could be happening like i also tend to say things at the wrong time and then because of not being able to tell people's intent or emotion i don't know that i've upset them which was obviously a problem going through school um it was also a problem you know um writing emails or uh, taking phone calls from doctors or psychologists. But yeah, low functioning autism also does exist. I recommend um, you look up like, you know, low functioning only because I don't think I'm at liberty to talk about um, something I have never personally experienced. So next I want to talk about autism in school. Um, so obviously seeing my sister grow up because I'm actually 11 months older than her. Seeing her grow up, I obviously had sort of knowledge of like basic autistic traits uh, before I was diagnosed or knew of any possibility of me having autism as well. I remember when I think she got kicked out year four, year five, um, she was expelled from primary school uh, for being like naughty, essentially. She was disruptive because she couldn't understand people's social cues and therefore was bullied for it quite relentlessly. She and my parents had gone to school multiple times and said, this needs to be sorted. It's really uncomfortable for her to be in the school. Um, but they, they didn't do anything at all. The teachers and the staff at the school and the kids took this as a easy, easy way to bully. The staff at the school were very unsupportive. They kicked her out, obviously. Um, even though my mom had said, um, we're trying to get her an autism diagnosis, we're seeing if she has autism. So that happened. And I think that was kind of a big shock to everyone because in that specific primary school, which was the primary school I also went to, we're in the same school year. Um, in that primary school, which is a primary school I went to, 
there was an autism um, for parents club. So basically, if your child was autistic, um, it was like a club where you could go and speak about it and get advice and resources. A couple years later, year six, I was kicked out in the middle of year six, sort of. I actually left. Obviously, I was in the same year as my sister. Uh, my sister was kicked out in year four, and for the next two years, I, re I received quiet, prodding questions. Some of them were, I'm sure, um, intended to be nice and helpful. So like, how is, how is she doing? Like, is she okay? I didn't take it as that because I couldn't read the fact that they were being nice about it. This went on for some time. Uh, until the middle of year six, I started having very bad panic attacks and I would still try and go to school. I was literally perfect attendance for like so long up until this point. The questions that were once, is she okay, turned into, oh, why don't you just do what she did? Then I got my diagnosis. Because of this, I didn't do my SATs. For anyone who's American, SATs are like, um, at the end of your initial school. So I think in America, that's kindergarten. There are some exams. Uh, you can also do the 11 plus along with these exams. Secondary school wasn't much better. In fact, it was worse. Uh, the students were worse, definitely. The teaching staff just expected you to be able to deal with it. It's something you need to learn to cope with over time. And even then, it's never fully fixed. So personally, I think there should be more education in schools for um, to teach people, not just like autistic people, but people who may have to encounter autistic people in life, which is everyone, because anyone and everyone can have autism and everyone does, to a mild extent. I also think there should be education for teachers um, on autism, because it's all well and good saying, oh, I did a first aid course, but first aid and autism are completely different. So I think that is a real stepping stone that needs to be made in order for children to feel more safe, because it's becoming evident that more and more children are dropping out of school because of bullying, because of the lack of social care and the focus on academic. Autism and the media, because I think this is a very, very juicy one. Autistic people in the media are villainized quite often. For instance, in America, shootings, uh, like school shootings, um, for some strange reason, they have to mention in the news article that this school shooter was autistic. Of course, it's going to make autistic people as a whole look quite um, villainous because if they're shooting up schools, right? I think that's where you need to draw the line. Okay, you've mentioned that this school shooter is autistic, but did he shoot up the school because of his autism? Probably not. And that's, that's the thing here. Most school shootings happen because of um, developmental or environmental discomfort. I also think um, the thing with the vaccine that went round, uh, don't vaccinate your kids, they'll get autism. Um, there are many kids that have never been vaccinated that have autism. There are many kids that have been vaccinated that don't have autism. I don't know what else to say. The people that are anti-vax, like I get, you don't want to get your kids vaccinated, that's completely up to you, I guess. But it doesn't have anything to do with a neurological condition they're not injecting it into your brain and that also villainizes autistic people because it makes it look like oh why would you want your kids to have autism okay no one wishes that upon anyone but what's the issue there are plenty of amazing politicians scientists musicians artists famous people with autism that are incredibly talented and incredibly intelligent so autism isn't a disadvantage, it's just a different advantage. There are a couple of films and um, programs and articles that twist it to look like a disease. It's not a disease. It's not something that can be cured, it's something that can be controlled. Which is why I'm going to go on about a um, organisation now, which is completely harmful to autistic people um, and their reputation within society. Um, it's called Autism Speaks. Um, it sounds like a good thing, right? Autism Speaks, like speaking out for autism. Most of, if not all of the statistics, facts they claim to have are false. Ask any autistic person on Twitter, ask any autistic person on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, any autistic person, for that matter, that knows of the company. Um, no. They're literally 
um, they're essentially a hate organization. Their mission, if you like, is to cure it, which if they knew anything about autism, they would know that that won't happen. Autism Speaks fed some information to a famous music artist who is making a film. This film um, is about a low functioning autistic girl and is completely and utterly disgusting. Many people on Twitter confronted the singer about this and said, you're getting your information from the wrong place. You should have hired someone maybe more suitable for the role um, and got blocked or shut down or attacked for simply stating a fact. This movie is due to come out eventually. Uh, it's called Music. I wouldn't recommend watching it. It, it. There's been clips released. There is racist black facing in the first five minutes, supposedly. I haven't seen it, but that's what I've heard. Um, and it's very ableist. So please, for the love of God, don't go and see that movie. Like, there's no point if you want to learn about autism. Um, I am going to show you some well, I say show you, give you some reliable resources right now. The most reliable, genuine resource you can get for autism is autistic people themselves. If you want to learn about a specific person's autism, so that's a friend, a partner, a family member, ask them. Yes, you can go on Google, onto sites, um, and find generalized autistic information, such as how to help them with meltdowns, such. But everyone's autism is different and what works for some might not work for all. In conclusion, the things I've covered are all quite in-depth topics. Um, but if you would like videos delving deeper into those topics, uh, please let me know in the comments um, as I'd love to provide them. If you enjoyed, give it a like, give it a subscribe. Um, and I hope to see you on another video.